In this lesson, we will learn how to correctly predict resonance structures and how to draw the correct arrows for them. But first, what are resonance structures? Well, resonance structures are different forms of the same molecule where electrons get rearranged. It's important to note that only electrons get rearranged. The atoms and the connection stays the same. How do we draw our resonance structures? In order to do so, we must first learn how to draw arrows. Well, the arrow that we use to draw resonance structure is called a curved arrow, and it looks like this. And my curved arrow has a tail and a head. It basically symbolizes where electrons are going. So the tail is where electrons are coming from which means that the place where they're coming from must have extra electrons to give. What could these places be? Well, if we have, for example, a lone pair of electrons on an atom that can give, that can give its electrons away, or if we have a double bond, that means also it has extra electrons to give. Now, where it's going, the head symbolizes a place that can accept a pair of electrons. Oops. That can accept a pair of electrons. What could that place be? Something that has a positive charge, for example, means it doesn't have enough electrons and it can accept an extra pair. We will also see that it's not always positive charge, uh, something that can take electrons and then give some of its electrons away. We can draw multiple arrows, can also accept. So now that we know what a curved arrow is, we will learn how to use it. But first, let's go through some rules for drawing the correct resonance structures. The first rule is to not give more than an octet, octet means eight electrons, to second period elements. Now, these elements, such as oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, they want to have eight electrons. They cannot have more than eight electrons. So if our arrow shows giving one of these elements more than eight electrons and we cannot do anything about it, meaning that um, we cannot take any extra electrons from it, this is a bad arrow. This cannot be the resonance form. Let's go ahead and see what this rule means. Let's say I have this simple molecule and let's say that I want to draw an arrow that looks like this. And let's see what the results in structure would be. So actually, before we see what the resulting structure would be, let's see what this arrow symbolizes. So it basically says, I'm going to take electrons from this double bond and I'm going to give it um, to make a double bond between these two carbons, okay? Well, why, why can we draw this arrow or not? Okay, so first, we need to realize that the carbon on top, it has one hydrogen and the carbon to the right has three hydrogens. Because it's neutral, hydrogens were not shown, but each carbon has uh, wants to have four bonds and it was neutral, which means it had four bonds. So it has three hydrogens. If we put theoretically our electrons here, that means this carbon is going to get extra electrons. But it already has one, two, three, four bonds, which means it already has eight electrons. Can we give it more? No, we cannot, because if we give it more electrons, that means that it will have more than eight, and we cannot take anything away from it, to, uh, to compensate for it. So it will end up stuck having more than eight electrons, which is impossible according to the rule number one. So this kind of error would be faulty. We cannot draw it. So we always have to pay attention and make sure 
that uh, elements such as carbon, usually it's carbon, but others in group two don't have more than an octet when we draw our arrows. Let's go ahead and go to rule number two. Rule number two says all resonance structures will have the same total charge. So let's say that I have resonance structure one, two, let me call it one, two, three, three resonance structures. And let's say the first one, and we draw double way arrows between resonance structures, by the way. Let's say the first one has a total charge of plus one. The second one must have a total charge of plus one. It could be plus two minus one, which adds up to one, or just plus one somewhere, but the total charge must be plus one. And the third one has to have a total charge of plus one as well. If they do not, if you end up with resonance structures that don't have the same total charge, you did something wrong. Either you calculated your formal charge incorrectly or you drew your resonance incorrectly. So make sure to satisfy rule number two as well. Now that we went through all of the rules, we can go ahead and we can look at common patterns for resonance structures. So let me go ahead and write common patterns and we will look at some common patterns so we can get a good idea of how to draw resonances. The first common pattern is when we have a double bond next to next to a positive charge. Okay, let's give a simple example. Let's say I have a double bond which is next to carbon with a positive charge. Well, we said before, when we draw our arrows, we can go from a place that has extra electrons, such as a double bond, to a place that is lacking electrons, such as carbon with a positive charge. So this arrow is possible. And between the resonances, we put a, a double way arrow. And let's see what the new structure is. So this arrow, this blue arrow is showing us that electrons from the double bond went ahead and moved um, to make a double bond here between these two carbons, which is okay because the carbon at the very right had a positive charge, which means it can accept electrons. Now that this carbon, it had a positive charge, but it accepted extra electrons, it becomes neutral. The carbon at the very end here, to the left, that was neutral, lost its electrons, which means it became positively charged. And if you're a little confused about it, you can watch my lecture on formal charges to understand it better, how to calculate it. But generally, an element, if it's neutral and if it gains electrons, becomes negative. If it is neutral and if it loses electrons, it becomes positive. So these are our two resonance forms. Uh, and they show basically the rule when we have a double bond next to a positive charge, we can move electrons from the double bond to the positive charge uh, to help it. Let's go ahead and see this pattern again in another molecule. Let's say that I have this kind of molecule, I have two double bonds and I have a positive charge here. What can I do? Well, again, I see a double bond next to a positive charge, actually multiple, couple of double bonds. So let me start with my left double bond. You could have started with the right one. Move electrons here and let's see what we make. Okay. I moved my electrons from this double bond here, which means the top carbon has all of the electrons. Now it has no formal charge. This carbon lost its electrons. It has a positive charge. And we have this double bond because we did not touch it. And let's go ahead. There is more resonance structures that I can draw, right? Because I have this positive charge here. Again, it's next to this double bond and I can move it. 
So sometimes if you have a ring and you have a bunch of double bonds, you can just go in circle until you exhaust all of your positions. This carbon now has a positive charge because it lost the double bond. Now my double bond is at the bottom. And let's go ahead and see what else we can make. Okay, I have a positive charge here. I can move this double bond. And I will move it to the right, which means this carbon now has a positive charge. This double bond I did not touch. That's a lot of resonances, right? Some molecules will have two resonances and some molecules, look at this one, will have a lot. Okay, can I do any more? any more resonance. Let's see. Well, I can move this here and let's see what I will get. I got positive charge here because that carbon lost its double bond and this did not switch. Now, if I try to move, let's say, this double bond here, I will basically end up with, the, with my first original structure, this one, which means I have exhausted all of my resonances. This, this must be it. I have five resonance structures for this molecule. Also notice that, um, for example, let's look at this one. If I would have moved this one, here, if I would have used that double bond, that would have just brought me to the original molecule. So that's why I didn't use it. Okay, excellent. Um, another thing that we should look at is the total charge. Well, the charge for each one of these molecules I have drawn is plus one. So rule number two makes sense. My total charge for each of these resonance structures is the same. And that it was pattern number one. Let's go ahead and look at pattern number two. These are the most common patterns. There are more, but these will be the most common patterns. That will be a double bond next to a lone pair of electrons. Next to, I'll just draw a lone pair of electrons. It could be either neutral lone pair on an atom, or sometimes it says negative charge. Now, if we see that, what do we do? Again, let's go with the simplest example. Let's say I have a lone pair on this carbon, which means it has a negative charge. So again, what we do is we can move our, we can move our electrons from a place that has extra electrons, the place that we definitely cannot give this carbon, which already has a negative charge, more electrons. It really does not want to be even more charged than it already has. So what we're going to do is we will move electrons from this carbon here. Now if you take a, a look at this carbon, it already has, it's already neutral, it already has an octet. It has one, two, three, and then it has a bond for the hydrogen, four bonds. So you would say, wait a second, that's breaking rule number one. We cannot have this carbon have so many electrons, and you would be right. But we can help it by moving this double bond to the end carbon. So whenever we have a double bond next to a lone pair, we will have two arrows, one going from the lone pair and another going from the double bond. And let's see what we get. Let's redraw this. Okay, since we use these electrons, we created the double bond here. And this carbon is now neutral because it used its electrons. The carbon in the middle is also neutral because it gained a bond, but it also lost one. But the carbon on the left gained extra electrons. So we will put a lone pair next to it and show the negative charge. Again, it it also uh, it's it, it also goes with the rule number two, which means that the total charge on the left is minus one, on the right it's minus one as well.
let's go ahead and look at more molecules to master our skills. Let's say I have a molecule like this. I have a nitrogen connected to C double bond O. My nitrogen has two hydrogens attached to it. So what are we going to see here? Well, let me just show the electrons that this oxygen has, the lone pairs, to make it an octet. Okay, we again see we have a double bond and we also have a lone pair next to it. So what can we do? Again, we can bring an arrow from the lone pair here. Now this carbon would be too unhappy with too many electrons, so we need to take away some of its electrons to make sure it does not have an extent it does not have more than an octet so if we draw our second air from the double bond to this oxygen because it can accept more and let's go ahead and show what this would look like my nitrogen has the hydrogens it used its lone pair to make a double bond here so i show a double bond this carbon is still okay because I took away one of its double bonds and I gave it as electrons for the oxygen. The extra pair of electrons. For example, this extra pair came from this blue arrow. Excellent. Let's go ahead and do one more molecule for practice and then I think we will be in good shape. So let's say that I have molecule that looks like this it is a benzene ring which you will learn second trimester second semester a lot about and it looks like this i have to show all of my electrons okay how do we draw its resonance structures again i notice oh i have a lone pair and i have a double bond next to it so what can i do from the lone pair to the carbon, to, the, to, to make the bond between oxygen and carbon and from the double bond, we can go here. And let's go ahead and show that. I made the double bond here, OH. My oxygen was neutral. Now it gave away its electrons. So it becomes positively charged or you can calculate the formal charge the way I showed in the other video. This carbon had a double bond but it's going to get extra electrons so it is negatively charged and the rest of my double bonds I did not touch. Notice what is the formal what is the total charge for this molecule? Zero. I did not show any charges. What is the total charge for this molecule? Plus one, minus one, that's also zero. So far, so good. Can I draw anything else? Yes, I can. This double bond is next to this lone pair. So I can go like this and like this. And let's see my resulting resonance. I did not touch this side, so I will just redraw it. I did not touch this double bond. Okay, so my lone pair was used to make a double bond here, and now I have a lone pair on this carbon, negative charge. Can I continue? Can I go on? Yes, I can. Let's see how. Let's go ahead. So I have, again, this um, ring. I did not touch the OH. It's positively charged. Lone pair here. I did not touch this double bond. Okay, now the right double bond went here. So I made a new double bond here. And now I have lone pair of electrons with a minus charge here. Perfect. Now, if you notice, um, what else can I do? Well, I can draw again i have a lone pair next to a double bond so let's move it i can go here and i can go here
Again, I did not touch these double bonds. This became a double bond here. And my oxygen got its extra electrons. And now I'm here. So this molecule has a lot of resonance forms. And we can see that its resonance forms all have a total charge of zero. So the total charge rule number two applied well. Great job. Uh, this is Maya from Transformation Tutoring. I will have a practice sheet uh, for at, uh, below the, uh, my video that you can download and practice. And I will see you soon with more chemistry videos.